The lost city of Atlantis is mainly known for being an island that disappeared overnight. But what isn't known is that the city was more technologically advanced in some ways than we are even capable of today. Based on the account given, we have to ask ourselves, did the city even exist? Was it a figment of a visionary's imagination? Or is there ancient technology that if discovered could change the course of humanity forever? Let's find this out together. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato, around 360 BCE, was the first to mention the lost city. Plato painted a picture of not just any island, but a utopia. A powerful nation with advanced technology and rich resources that dominated parts of Western Europe and Africa, around 9600 BCE. However, Plato also described a dark turn. Consumed by greed, the Atlanteans met their demise which led to a cataclysmic event that submerged the city into the depths of the ocean in a single day and night of misfortune. What could have caused this disaster? Was it a punishment from the gods or a natural and unfortunate catastrophe? I'm your host, Jamie, and join me as we dive into the fascinating legend of the lost city of Atlantis. In his dialogues called Timius and Critias, Plato described the legend of Atlantis as a powerful civilization that vanished without a trace, and sparked debate for millennia. One of the most intriguing things about this mystery is that experts place Atlantis all across the globe, from the vast Atlantic Ocean to Antarctica and the Caribbean. Plato left a single clue about the location of Atlantis, in front of the Pillars of Hercules, an alleged reference to the Strait of Gibraltar, that is close to the western edge of the Mediterranean. Despite modern technology, the search for Atlantis continues. One intriguing theory links Atlantis to the Minoan civilization, a real Bronze Age power that was centered around the island of Crete in the Aegean Sea. Around 3,600 years ago, a massive volcanic eruption on the nearby island of Thera, which is modern-day Santorini, devastated the Minoans, with it reaching as far as the Orient. The eruption shockwaves and resulting tsunami could provide an explanation of the sudden demise described in Plato's account. Thera was also part of the Minoan Empire, which boasts a complex society and advanced architecture, aligning with Plato's description of Atlantis' glory. While some scholars dismiss Plato's story entirely, the Minoan civilization offers a compelling possibility. Could a real civilization, which was tragically destroyed by a natural disaster, be the basis for the legend of Atlantis. As we delve deeper into the story of Atlantis, we aim to figure out the location and what caused its demise. Let's dive into some of the theories. The first theory suggests that a massive flood, possibly connected to the end of the Ice Age, thousands of years before Plato's time occurred, wiping out most of humanity. It also suggests that Atlantis isn't about the specific location, but rather a distorted memory of the flood that destroyed civilizations around the world. And Plato's dialogue is just a mythical retelling of said event. Now there have been numerous interpretations of this theory, and we're going to talk about three of them. One is from Graham Hancock, a presenter in the Netflix documentary Ancient Apocalypse. He proposes that the massive floods that destroyed Atlantis and engulfed the world was due to a giant comet striking the Earth. His argument includes the inspiration of the legend and that survivors from Atlantis were the ones who had spread the tale passed down from generation to generation. Another interpretation is from geologists, as they believe that the link between Atlantis and a real-world event is the Meltwater Pulse 1B. Now, Meltwater Pulse 1b was a catastrophic sea rise that took place around 9600 BC, which coincides with Plato's description of when Atlantis had fallen. The last interpretation points towards the massive volcanic eruption in Santorini, Greece, around 1630 BC as the one that caused Atlantis' destruction and eventual sinking. Now, the impact of this eruption was powerful enough that it left behind the geological and archaeological evidence that highly matches with Plato's description of Atlantis' demise. Records show that the eruption of Thera was one of the largest volcanic eruptions in the Holocene Epoch. Amidst this, Akrotiri, a city that had been buried, became one of the key archaeological sites of the 2nd millennium BCE. 
This eruption was considered a pivotal event in the prehistory of the Aegean and East Mediterranean region. Could Santorini actually be the lost city of Atlantis, hiding in plain sight? Interestingly enough, Plato's description of Atlantis' landscape is eerily similar to Theris' topography in ships described in Acrates' paintings, which highly resembles those from the story of Atlantis. Even more, cultural similarities exist between the Minoan civilization of Santorini and Plato's Atlanteans. The different interpretations from varied accounts share different explanations for the flooding that led to Atlantis' demise. Ranging from cosmic events like comic strikes to geological disasters akin to volcanic eruptions. However, which of these, if any, holds the most weight? The next theory, proposed by the late Charles Hapgood, throws us for a loop as it defies what we know about Atlantis up until this point. This theory suggests that Atlantis wasn't a tropical paradise, but a landmass in a more temperate Antarctica. It proposes that a shift in the Earth's poles caused Antarctica to fall and become a frozen wasteland. This theory is controversial, as Hapgood asserts that the Earth's crust may have suddenly shifted some 12,000 years ago. He adds that the Earth's crust floats above a magma of molten rock similar to the skin of an orange, and it periodically shifts over the millennia because of the subterranean and gravitational pressures. This theory has caught the attention of many Atlantis enthusiasts over the years. Hapgood mentioned that some time ago, Antarctica was much further north than it is now, but has moved due to this shift. He continued his statement saying that Antarctica was much more temperate and a home to an advanced civilization, and he believes that this is what Plato was referring to as Atlantis. The sudden, catastrophic shift in this current icy position allegedly led to the demise of the Atlanteans and made Antarctica the frozen wasteland it is today. Although this theory is supported by many, the idea that the Earth's crust shifts periodically and so drastically has no evidentiary support and backing within the scientific community. It is also denoted that this theory was proposed by Hapgood at a time where we were still unable to grasp a full understanding on the nature of plate tectonics. Without having the knowledge we have today, it makes it hard to trust this hypothesis. With the information he had at the time, he proposed an educated guess on what happened to the lost city. While the idea of sliding crust is debated, could there be alternate explanations for an advanced civilization and a historically warmer Antarctica. What secrets could be lying beneath the ice? And if Atlantis really was there, what kind of technology or artifacts would be able to be discovered, hidden just beneath the ice? The third theory proposes that Atlantis was part of one of two lost continents. This theory claims that Atlantis was part of a lost continent called Lemuria, believed to have been located in the Indian Ocean or the lost continent of Mu, believed to have been located in the Pacific Ocean. This theory suggests that these two land masses allegedly sank, engulfed by the waves, leaving Atlantis as a fragment of a forgotten world. Now this theory is fascinating as it introduces us to a concept that intertwines two legendary lost lands. Let's recount what we have discovered so far. We know that Atlantis was described by Plato to be a great island civilization located beyond the Pillars of Hercules. On the other hand, Lemuria is hypothesized as a lost continent that is located in the Indian Ocean and by some accounts, from the Pacific. While Atlantis was pictured as an advanced civilization, it was alleged that it fell through divine retribution. Lemuria was described as a land bridge that linked different regions and was said to be inhabited by large reptilian humanoids referred to as Lemurians, who possessed advanced technology and telepathic abilities. In 1864, the theory of Lemuria was first proposed by zoologist Philip Lutley Sclater. His aim was to explain the distribution of lemurs and other small, primitive, tree-dwelling mammals in Africa, Madagascar, India, and Southeast Asia. Lemuria was derived from the Latin word for lemurs. Later on, German naturalist Ernst Haeckel expanded on the concept of Lemuria and suggested the existence of an ancient continent called Lemuria in his controversial detailing of Darwin's theories even so far as suggesting it's the potential birthplace of the human race. 
With that, we are left to wonder how Atlantis could possibly be related to Lemuria, giving the stark differences between the two. This is where Helena Blavatsky, a Russian mystic and the founder of Theosophy, enters the picture as she explores the connection between the two in her book, The Secret Doctrine, in 1888. Firstly, Blavatsky believed that both Atlantis and Lemuria were indeed real places that existed at some point. She also believed that Lemuria was older than Atlantis and was located in the Pacific. She believed that it served as the cradle of humanity. In Blavatsky's writings, she suggested that isolated pockets of Atlanteans were able to survive and eventually form new societies in Egypt and in the Americas after the destruction of their land. Thus, Blavatsky connected the two lands by denoting that Lemuria was the original home of humanity before Atlanteans appeared. She believes that Atlanteans evolved from Lemurians. She further backs her claims by stating that Atlantis was a civilization in the Atlantic Ocean that was destroyed due to the misuse of psychic powers and advanced technology. Many believe in her theory as she links the histories of the two lost lands and presents them as integral parts of humanity's evolutionary journey. Moving forward to the other lost continent in this theory, we have Mu. Now Mu and Lemuria are sometimes used interchangeably and considered by some as one and the same. But here we are to offer another perception. While they do share some similarities, Lemuria was theorized to be in the Indian Ocean, while Mu was claimed to be in the Pacific Ocean. Lemuria also had a basis in scientific theory before being appropriated by esoteric beliefs, whereas Mu was primarily an esoteric concept from its inception. The theory of Atlantis being a part of the lost continent of Mu was proposed by Augustus Le Penjon, a British-American antiquarian. His assumptions were not based on science, but the description of Lemuria and later on some alleged artifacts. According to Augustus, Mu was a lost continent found in the Pacific Ocean, which was the birthplace of civilization and the roots of Mayan culture. Augustus firmly believed that the Mayans founded the Egyptian civilization. He supports his claims as he allegedly found evidence of this link during his archaeological explorations in Yucatan, Mexico. In 1896, Augustus later published his theories and speculations in his book Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx. However, Augustus' theories were inherently dismissed by mainstream archaeologists and historians as they considered them to be unfounded and lacking in factual, verifiable evidence. In 1926, this concept was taken to an entirely new level by James Churchwood, a British writer, inventor, engineer, and fisherman. In his book, The Lost Continent of Mew, The Motherland of Men, Churchwood came forward claiming to have seen the ancient clay tablets in India and the Niven tablets discovered in Mexico. These tablets allegedly told tales about the ancient land of Mu. However, no evidence was ever found that these tablets existed. Skeptics claimed that he was only claiming to have seen them to sell more books. Nonetheless, these two concepts continue to intrigue and inspire numerous interpretations in literature, pseudoscience, and pop culture. Both remain associated with Atlantis due to the similar descriptions and culture. With technology constantly being developed, we are left to wonder, will we ever find evidence of Atlantis, Lemuria, or even Mu? That is, if these three lost civilizations are indeed real. Now this theory is quite intriguing as well. Aside from not one specific individual proposing it, many theorists believe that the Bermuda Triangle is closely associated with the lost city. Circling back, this theory suggests that Atlantis was swallowed by the Bermuda Triangle. This belief assumes that the Bermuda Triangle, an area between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, is the location of Atlantis. The Bermuda Triangle is a location known for its various anomalies and mysterious disappearances. Could advanced technology in Atlantis be the reason behind the numerous anomalies within the Bermuda Triangle? According to the narrative, there was supposed evidence that suggested that the city was being inundated by rising waters and sinking land. As usual with unsolved mysteries, the government is somehow involved. In the 1960s, it was said that the U.S. government actually discovered an alleged place during the Cuban Missile Crisis, when nuclear submarines cruising in the Gulf discovered pyramid-like structures. This led to the site being closed down and monitored to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. 
As with the discovery of the pyramid structures, this theory also suggests they found sphinxes and stones that were arranged in a similar manner to that of Stonehenge. These stones allegedly had a written language engraved into them which suggests clues of an ancient civilization. As interesting as this theory may be, nothing is set in stone. As with all other theories, the lack of concrete evidence remains. Historians and scientists highly believe that Plato's account of Atlantis was purely a fabrication. Here's why. First, they believe that Atlantis was just Pluto's made-up story about a utopia gone wrong. With his background as a philosopher, his story could have been a warning against societal arrogance and the potential consequences of divine punishment. There's no evidence of Atlantis outside of Plato's dialogues and no mention of it in other Greek texts. Second, the search always comes up empty. With the advancements in technology, it is hard to believe that we haven't found any definite proof of the city by now. But it is believed that we've only explored between 5 and 20% of the ocean, so even with the technology we have, it is obviously possible that we have missed something. Another thing is that the timeline is just impossible. Plato described that Atlantis' demise took place around 11,600 years ago. However, archaeological records show that the first ever civilization in the Mediterranean emerged much later. This enormous discrepancy casts another layer of doubt on the authenticity of the legend. Plato's account involved gods like Zeus and Poseidon directly communicating and interacting with humans. While the premise of these events would be a very interesting story to share, this information only strengthens the argument that Atlantis is nothing more than a myth rather than a historical account. Archaeologist professor Vincent Gaffney led the research as part of a drowned landscape project called Europe's Lost Frontiers. This project was funded by the European Research Council. To this day, there are ongoing research efforts to crack the case of the lost city of Atlantis. Such efforts are specifically focused on the North Sea. Archaeologists from the University of Bradford and Ghent have also discovered evidence of human activity in what is known as Britain's Atlantis, which is believed to be from the Stone Age era, located at the bottom of the North Sea. Two potential settlement sites were also discovered by scientists, containing stone artifacts and possible evidence of access to numerous landscape zones, alluding to a thriving civilization much like Atlantis. The lost city of Atlantis, whether a myth or a reality continues to capture our imagination. It represents a lost utopia that reminds us of humanity's potential and its ability to destroy. The search for Atlantis has been woven into numerous works of fiction that have inspired artists, adventurers, and writers for hundreds of years. Perhaps Plato's objective wasn't to encourage the search for a city and its treasures, but to highlight the enduring human spirit that urges us to explore the unknown and seek answers to the mysteries of the past. That said, the truth will have to remain shrouded in mystery, lost in time, for now. If you like this video and want more videos, click on one of these two videos here.